Hey, this is your girl, Miss Bowleg and Mom, aka Angel Barbie 1981, and I'm here to talk to you today about supporting your local black owned businesses. I was talking to um, one of my best friends today, and she was talking to me, and she basically said that she feels that a lot of people would rather support the Asians or the Indians or just anybody else who's selling African American products, as far as like, um, Mainly she was talking about like maybe beauty supply stores, just just businesses like that. Um, she feels like um, we would rather give our money to the Indian people or the Asian people instead of supporting our own people who may be struggling in the community. And I told her, I said, I do believe that we should support a lot of black owned businesses, but I think that a lot of businesses, local businesses should be more educated before they step into the forefront of trying to own a business. And, you know, she was like, okay, well, what do you mean by that? You know, are you saying that um, you have to have a, a ton of degrees to open up a business? And I told her, no. I just feel like a lot of local black-owned businesses are not business savvy. They really don't know what to do. So she asked for examples. I said, okay. For an example, there is, um... I've been to, I'm going to just name, I'm not going to name out, but I'm going to talk about three biz, black owned businesses that I went to. <clears throat> okay, there's one business that I went to. I walked in and this guy had all of his friends there and he was more concerned about what club he was going to go to, what new fresh outfit he was going to buy, um, how he was going to entertain his, I'm going to keep it PG-13, pros. And he was not concerned about the customer. I walked in and, you know, he didn't greet me. He didn't even acknowledge the fact that I was there. And the thing, this was the thing. When I, this is how I am. I don't like going back and forth to a store. So if I go to a hair store, a grocery store, a clothing store, I like to buy and just bulk and just be done with it. I just don't like being out and about anymore. I used to love it, but now I'm just like, mm, I'd rather stay at home, you know? Um... Like I said, it was all about his friends. They talk and they curse all the time. They talk crazy. And, you know, I'm like, well, you know, you're running a business here. You need to turn it off. You need to tell your homeboys, hey, chill out. If they're going to be there, at least look like they're shopping. Okay, that, that could be a given. Um, change the language. Change the conversation or something. And it's not being fake. It's just more about trying to run a business prop you know, properly. Um that that was one store I went to. Another store I went to, um the I don't know. It's just with a lot of black owned businesses. I just feel like people tend to be in their own little worlds, like they just came to hang out and not necessarily to work and run a business. Um the second store I remember going to was a local black owned business and um, they were playing mixed CDs. Like they was bumping the explicit version of Lil Wayne and Young Jeezy and I don't know, just other rap artists. I can't name out everybody because I don't really, really, really support rap music anymore because it's garbage. I just have a problem with a grown man writing on a 12 year old's level. But anyway, that's, that's neither here nor there. That's a different topic. Anyway, um... Like I said, they were playing mixed CDs, and a lot of people were just feeling the vibe off the store, and they would leave. I talked to a lot of older people, and they were like, listen, it's just like a hangout spot. You know, I want to go in and pick up a few items, but, you know, I couldn't because they're, pl they're playing everyday club music, and, you know, I'd rather go to a club than to go to this, this store to pick up what I need. And this just something, like I said, some just said, look, it was just a turn off. I couldn't stand the music. I don't listen to that crap. And then they're playing the music with cursing in it. Like, come on, you're running a business. There's nothing wrong with, like, playing music in a facility. They kind of liven up the place. But, you know, make sure that you can put out a positive vibe out there that I, I enjoy your customer service. I want you to come back. I, I love the fact that you come in here and you buy everything. Even if you buy something that's 99 cents, it's okay. Come on back, you know. But... You know, with that store in particular, they, they was in the only world that was cussing along with the music and stuff. And I'm like, look, um, it's not like I've never heard cursing before. I'm not, you know, I never, I, I haven't been up under a rock or anything, but that's not appropriate for a business, okay? Another business I went to, um, I felt like when I walked into the store, the prices were extremely high. And it was like, I'm sitting here watching you give your friends the hookup, the hookup, 
when um then when I come in in desperate need of something, you overcharge me to make up for the profits that you lost. And I feel like that's not fair. You know, you want your customers to come back, you know. But overall, I told her, make a long story short, I just felt like a lot of black, local, local black owned businesses are not business savvy. And, you know, I'm not saying that a person that's running a local store cannot be business savvy. That's not what I'm saying. You have some people who have perfect good stores, but a lot of black owned businesses that I've been in, I mean, no, it's like they don't care about their customers, you know. And I've had another store I went to where the guy that was running the store, I mean, he just acted like you were more of a pest and not a customer. And um, he had a guy friend that was just a friend that happened to be there, just kind of just being an overseer or whatever. He wasn't really working there. He actually, he really paid me more of attention, trying to make sure that... Um, Try to ask me, you know, how am I doing today? You know, do I need help with anything? Okay, if you're looking for this type of product, are you looking for a certain brand? And then when I told him, oh, yeah, I'm looking for this and the other, he was like, okay, well, let me go get the owner because I don't work here. Are you serious? So, I was like, you know what, never mind. You guys are in your own little world. You could care less about, you know, people coming in and out. This is just some hangout spot. I don't want it. Plus, on top of that, you know, the prices were just pure robbery. So... I don't know, and I, and I told her that's the reason why I kind of sort of don't really support black-owned business. And I told her this, this is another point, is that when I went to the store where the Asians were selling stuff, I mean, I walked in, they're like, oh, hello, how are you? And, you know, I talked to them, we actually had a conversation, um, shared some laughs, said, okay, I'm here looking for this. And um, it got to the point where I became a regular customer. They gave me, like, extreme discounts. Um, but they were able to do that because they had the connections they could do that, you know. Um, I don't know. It's just they never really, they treated me more like I was family. And even if I see them out and about somewhere else, whether it's like another state over or a couple hours away from the business, they, oh, hello, how are you doing? And we love you and blah, blah, blah. And then to, to just kind of see where they really were to see where they just kind of just sucking up versus really just, you know, being friendly, I walked in the store, I remember, I walked in there maybe like five different times all in a row and didn't buy a thing. Just talked to them or whatever the case may be, and their attitudes were still the same. And then when I bought something, I'm like, you know what, we give you discount. And I'm like, oh, how cute, you know, but I felt like they were business savvy. They had a positive vibe in the store. They didn't harass you or act like you wasn't there. If you had a question, they didn't act like you were a pest. They just answered the questions. Or they, if they did not know, which I think they all knew, but they answered the best way they knew how. And they kept people coming back because, number one, they, like I said, positive vibe. They would never answer questions. They didn't hawk you or ignore you. Um, I don't know. Um, they, they just had more of a friendly vibe. You know, they didn't, you know, they're just friendlier. And I told her, I said, that's the reason why they get more support is because they actually, if, if they don't care about you, they're very good pretenders. I've never had a store that wasn't African American that I went into and they just did not help me. You know, now I've had stores I walked into where that person tend to just kind of stare and hawk and I'll just leave. Because I mean, like I said, I can't deal with that. That uncomfortable stuff, you know. But overall, I just never had a terrible experience. They just, they, they were helpful. <clears throat> the music they played, if they played music, it was clean. Or maybe they had like a video and it was showing different hairstyles, how to create different hairstyles or, or whatever the case may be. But, I mean, it was, it was good. They were good business and they kept being successful versus these businesses who had to close down because they were all about their friends. And I'm sorry to make it a black and white thing, but that's what it was. And she asked me about the, the, the supporting local black businesses. And, I mean, we just come up short. You know, you can't do people like that and think that they're going to actually give you that last dollar. If you treat people... If you treat people like that, like they're the best thing to walk through the door, these folks will literally give you their last dime, dollar, or penny. And I feel like if there's anyone who's starting a black local business or <clears throat> run a black local business, look at how you run things. Keep, 
you know, keep that ghetto mess down to a minimum. You know, you don't have to front or be fake, but put your best business foot, I guess that's the way to say it, put that forward. And stop trying to entertain your friends and give them a hookup. If they're always looking for something for free, they're not your friends, okay? So, I say if you're starting to run a business, whether it's clothes, selling clothes, or or shoes, or hair, or doing hair, oh, that's another one, but I'm not going to talk about that. Um, just make sure that you are business savvy. If you're not going to go to school for it, that's okay. Read up, read books on it. You have the books, the internet, I mean, different things. Just get, just be more aware of what you're doing, okay? This is your girl, Ms. Malega Ma, aka Angel Barbie 1981, and please feel free to comment, rate, or subscribe. Um, or leave a video response. Until then, bye, angels.